Molly here from Your Past is a Gift. Okay, so the other day I was talking to two people. Okay, it doesn't matter, it's irrelevant who they were. Or, but it came up in the conversation, we were talking about music and I was telling them how I teach piano in the afternoons. And so we went into, somehow the conversation turned into when did you start music and did you always like doing it and it, you know being a music teacher was what I wanted to be when I was growing up and so I went into the story of no <laughs> you know when I started learning piano my dream was to be a concert pianist that was my dream that was my passion and that's all I could think about at the time that's all I wanted and towards the end of that first year of learning with this teacher I started learning at 10 and she told me I was too old I had started too old to be a concert pianist okay in her mind and this is what she said to me anyway so I'm talking to these two women you know and they and then they said oh and so and I said I just gave up on it because you know she's the professional she's telling me it's impossible for me you know if I started at 10 to become a concert pianist so I kind of gave up on it and they both looked at each other with this look of Oh, such sadness, you know, like that was the end of my life. And I just sat there. And this is the second time now it's happened in the last few months, you know, but it was such a strong feeling within me. You know, I'm looking at them both, looking at each other with this intense sadness. And I'm thinking, but I'm not dead yet. <laughs> you know, I'm still alive. I'm still here. I'm still sitting here, you know, and it just this light bulb went off in my head and I'm thinking well why can't I still do that I am the only one stopping myself from doing that I'm the one that's decided oh it's too late you know and the last few weeks I've been sitting now my little one's at school and I've got you know the extra time that she's at school that I've got at least an hour a day that I can sit and practice and my playing is better than it's ever been in my life you know and I think I'm more relaxed about it because I've given up on the idea of it um, I also think because I've resolved that issue you know that competition that I had like I've tied all all the little I've put all the little dots together you know and I've worked it out of what happened and why I felt for the longest time that I couldn't play you know because I thought it was just a stage fright thing I didn't really tie it back to that one event at that competition where my rhythm was all wrong and I just lost my confidence completely and in the back of my mind every time I go to play I think it's wrong you know I was never corrected for the six to eight months that it took me to learn this piece I was never corrected that I was playing the wrong rhythm you know and so I'm sitting there and I'm thinking there's nothing stopping me from pursuing it you know and teaching my daughter that if you have a dream and it's that strong in you if you enjoy doing it that much then go for it do it because you are the only one you're the only one that gets in your own way just like I did you know I could have adopted a different attitude with this teacher and decided at the age of 10 almost 11 no I am gonna do that I'm gonna to prove to you that I'm not too old to do that I could have done that you know but then only two years later it comes to that point where we're doing the competition and my rhythm's all wrong and I lost my confidence completely you know to the point where I would play I felt like a robot playing for the longest time as much as I loved playing I always felt like a robot so stiff and so you know I, the only time I'd relax was when I was playing by myself I was playing it for me and I didn't care you know, and I could play it to make it sound however I wanted and I could play it as many times as I wanted and it didn't matter how perfect or not perfect it was. I was just in that moment enjoying that sound that was being created, you know. But it's been a couple of times now, This, this, the other day talking to these two women, it just really became such a strong desire in me, you know, to just do it. Rather than live the rest of my life with that regret that I listened to her and then I let that moment of the competition destroy my confidence. You know, now that I understand it, now that I know why I didn't have the confidence and why I've been playing 
like a stiff robot in front of others for so long and I've avoided playing in front of others for so long. I mean, I even went to um, a doctor to have hypnosis done because I would do concerts with my students and I could not for the life of me sit in front of them and play anything. I was terrified because I'm the teacher and what if I make a mistake? And there's all these parents watching. Like there was this huge pressure on my shoulders that I had placed on there myself. And I remember I had this gorgeous little girl and she, was, she started playing when she was four. And she, would, she had two, a brother and a sister, older than her that were already learning with me. But her desire was so strong that she would copy, even before she started with me, she would already be copying their songs. And I would come over to their house to do their lessons and she would show me, always, with this huge smile on her face. And I remember once she started doing the lessons, she would have been five by this stage, we had our first um, concert. And at the time we used to go to nursing homes and we'd play at the nursing homes for all the elderly, you know. Um, and it was her turn to play and she sat at the piano. And as she started playing her piece, she turned to me, not looking at the piano, her fingers were going doing their thing. And she gave me the most gorgeous smile. You know, like, thank you, I am so happy now. You know, this is what I'm meant to do. And I remember sitting in that moment, you know, thinking that's what music is. You know, I didn't create the piece, I didn't compose it. I'm just playing it for someone else to enjoy without us spending all those hours practicing at the piano or at any instrument. Nobody would know what these songs sound like, what these beautiful pieces sound like without someone dedicating that time to playing them for others. And that's what music is. It's supposed to be something that's enjoyed from both sides, from the person that is playing it. They're sharing what they've played what they've been practicing for months and months and months and years and years and years. They're sharing, you know, someone else's piece for you that you can enjoy it with your ears because that's what we're here for, to experience everything. You know, when we look at things, when we look at the sky, when we look at the flowers, when we look at the, when we're at the beach and we look at the sea, you're experiencing life with your eyes and music to experience this beautiful sound with your ears is one of the most amazing experiences in this life. Music is such a wonderful thing. And for us, it's such a privilege to be able to share it. And for the longest time, I remember that little girl and that beautiful smile. And I always think that's what it's all about. That's what music is all about. It's about sharing that feeling of how beautiful it sounds and not keeping it to yourself. You're sharing it with others. All right, my darlings. So something to think about there. If you have a dream, you've always had a dream and you've done all this work now, you've gone through all the videos and you've understood why you haven't pursued that dream or you've stopped altogether, you've decided that's not for you. I want you to look at it again. There's a reason you had that passion, you had that desire in the first place. And maybe all of these experiences